First set, Rafael Nadal to serve. Fifteen love. Fault. Fifty nine. Nadal comes to the net. 30, 15. Through the years, he's actually started to develop a better front court game. You'll see him from time to time play some doubles on the tour. He's actually played Indian Wells a couple of times out in California near Palm Springs. And that's the key shot for Rafael Nadal, for him to regain his form, his elite form. I believe it's that first serve, that one at 114 miles an hour, but well placed into the body. That gives him easier points, quicker points, where he doesn't have to work so hard. Game, Nadal. Great start for Nadal. The pride of Mallorca, one love. First game. He's got his routine. Starts with the energy drink, the electrolytes, and he goes right to the water, puts him up just right. And then Fanini. <laughs> He's a funny dude. You couldn't get more opposite of the spectrum between these two guys. <laughs> <laughs> you just did. Players are ready, please. Sit quickly behind the players. Thank you. Benini is going to try to get into the head of Rafael Nadal, who likes everything just so, and be caught in his own world. And Fanini is just going to try to shake it up a little bit. Shake it up by doing what? Well, Changing up the tempo. Sometimes he'll play fast. Sometimes he'll play slow. Sometimes he'll make it longer points. Sometimes he'll hit a drop shot. Some, and this is all controlled madness. He'll quick serve him. He'll make him wait. Remember, you, we've done enough Rafi on the duck. He likes everything mm -hmm. just so. So you got a guy who plays into that and plays with that and starts pulling those strings. And Rafa does not like, like it at all. Fifteen thirteen. So when Fanini's going through all those tennis balls with the ball kids, 
I think he went through six there. He's looking for the, the newest ball in the lot. That's going to be the fastest one out of the off the racket. We're only in the second game. I know. That's a great passing shot. You see Rafa early on going to the fist pump. 15-14. Sometimes he still looks like he's playing on clay. He slides into it, those shots, just like Clay. Game another. So Fonini double faults the game away, and Nadal's got an early Nadal service break to build on. Well. well, the number 32 seed from Italy, Fonini, a little nervous right now. 15-40, no reason to, to overplay that. But he pushes it long, and now the momentum clearly with the Spaniard the legendary Rafael Nadal. Fifteen love. You know, it's interesting. They've played all over the world. When they first met, it was in Rome. You figure the atmosphere would have been great for Fanini. Nadal blows his doors off. <laughs> They play in Spain. You think it would be awesome for Nadal? Nadal loses. And there's some of that talent Fanini's starting to show, not just angles, but his ability to change direction. Tiger Woods in attendance. Tiger Woods was here a couple of years ago with Roger Federer, and he was so surprised, it was right before a final, how casual and how calm Roger was just moments before. That's the forehand that we've been talking about. All of a sudden, it just goes crazy Ivan and just takes off and sails on him where he's trying to come up the backside of the ball, and he doesn't get truly the topspin he needs to come back down. So he compensates with extra topspin. So his range right now with one of his better shots is completely off. 30 all. Ooh, best shot of the match so far for Fonini. 13-14. He's got a chance to break back. Oh, he just pushes it long. So going back to the Tiger Woods story, he would, Tiger couldn't believe that a guy, moments before he walks on the court for a Grand Slam final, is just talking like you and I. So how's family, kids, everything's good? Where Tiger would say, a week before, man, I'm locked in. Like, no one's calling me. I'm going, you know, I'm drilling down to the DEF CON. Oh, that's part of the cool of Roger, right? So relaxed. Advantage, Nadal. Well, Nadal takes two points in a row to regain the edge.
See, there's that one of those forehands that just goes crazy off of his racket. And they're not close. Yeah. I mean, that's outside the doubles alley. And it's not even a shot selection issue. He's just doing a routine. I think going for a winner. I mean, Fanini hit the ball, but this is there's no way a guy at this level should be missing a forehand outside the doubles alley. Going to Dal covered some ground. And he is sliding. And he did so very stylishly, no surprise. You know, both of these guys look like their name. Nadal looks like a Rafa. And Fonini looks like a Fonini <laughs> to me. Fabio. Challenge that. Mr. Nadal is a challenge the ball on the right near sideline. Ball was called in. I think he's got a case. Pretty close. And I think that ball was out. Oh, ho, ho. so what I learned is it's much better if you wait till after the review to call it. <laughs> I was to work with this guy. And he's, he's saying, oh, after review, he goes, oh, I knew it was going to be in, or I knew it was going to be in. Is that right? You're batting a thousand. That's <laughs> funny. And he gets the net benefit. So he breaks back and is on the board. Now that leads by two and to one. It's exactly the way he would have designed it. Fonini to serve to square things off in the first set. A tight beginning to the match. Nadal breaks Fonini. Fonini breaks back. And here we go, 1-2. Love thirty. Love thirty. Okay, here come here comes the the chirping now. Panini's just starting to get warmed up. Fifteen thirty. You heard the crowd growing once someone wins here. The fans are very partial to their champions.
Ogdahl really putting the pressure on Fonini deep in that corner. Well, now we have a chance for three straight breaks. Camp Nadal. That get in the middle of the point was pretty impressive by Fonini. A tremendous amount of anticipation. He, he can really pick off, call it at the pro level, your ability to read the shot from the other side. I think last night we were talking about Roger trying to guess where he's going to go and try to read his body language and how he sets up to hit the ball. If you can see if you can guess, he's going cross quarter down the line. Same with Fanini. But he does it with a very quick eye. Look at that. See, that it's that delayed attack. So he hits this backhand with no intent of going in, but the, the backhand is placed so well, and he notices that Nadal's going to be in a defensive shot off the backhand side. So he charges in and takes the next one out of the air. That is that anticipation we're talking about. And if you're looking for it, he will constantly surprise you and surprise his opponent, Nadal. And then he'll do that. So that's why he's number 32 here at the U.S. Open, 32 seed. Pretty, he's really a top 10 talent. Pretty early for seven unforced errors. That's a great defensive shot. Nadal leads by three games to one. Go to usopen.org for everything U.S. Open. Score stats, schedules, and the U.S. Open store, all at usopen.org. Oh, oh, oh. Love 15. It's the beginning of Labor Day weekend in the United States. It's a federal holiday that honors the workers of America that made this country. Well, there's a lot of traffic. Watch where Fanini plays no, this shot. Little drop shot. Oh, I'm not going to play a replay, but Nadal is so far back behind his own baseline that that area of the court is open. But to see it and execute it shows the talent from the Italian. Fifteen thirty.
But then he has to be a, a little bit more patient. Wait till maybe the fifth or sixth ball in the rally before you uncork a bigger shot, especially off the backhand side. That's a couple of errors off the backhand going cross court. So he hasn't really felt the rhythm or timing yet. He's got to get up underneath that ball. And Nadal with a sneak attack of his own. 30 old. Well, the crowd was in anticipation of an amazing shot from Nadal, but it never came. Thirty fourteen. We could have a fourth straight service break. What's up here? <laughs> no. Well, both of these players are extremely talented. I don't think they've really settled in, especially Fanini, into this match. I felt Nadal had his moment at 2-0 to really set the tone on the hold, but he got broken right back. And a fist pump on a second chance. But a big one. I mean, he really, and what he's telling us is how important this play was. He comes up, he doesn't do a lot with his volley, but it's designed to go short to get this ball and he's in a full lather. I mean, it looks like he just took a a big cannonball dunk into the pool. Forced error number nine. Nadal also senses that he can really put some scoreboard pressure on this guy by going up 4 1, trying to steal the first set and make Fanini really play from behind. And he's got it. Nadal up 4-1 in the opening set here in New York. Rafael Nadal has had his way. Too many mistakes so far in the match for the 32nd seed Fabio Fonini. Nadal missed last year, so you pay for it with your ranking and, and seedings a little bit. So he's the 8th seed, but up 4-1 here. Al Troutwig along with Luke Jensen. Night 5 at the U.S. Open. Challenging the call on the left near sideline, but was called good. How about this chair umpire, huh? I mean, he did that with style. Mr. Fonini. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Call stands. Low 15. What a shot by Nadal. But that's the forehand we used to see. Remember that one that went outside the doubles alley? Mm-hmm.
15 all. Mr. Fonini has two challenges remaining. It didn't sound very chair umpire -y. It was almost as if some carnival guy grabbed I mean, yeah. the microphone. And there's the forehand that has too much top. You know what I mean? Where is the consistent forehand? Not just in the court, just around the baseline, around the, you know, is it wide? Is it short? Is it deep? Is it on the line? Another one. 14, 15. As a kid, he actually started out with two hands on both sides. Then after he got strong enough to be able to come off the two-hand forehand, Uncle Tony changed him to a one, and that's the forehand that you have now. And every once in a while, he'll show elements of that two, which means more shoulder turn. Oh. And the signature follow-through. And there's Uncle Tony right to the left. 14, 13. Hopping a hit. But Fonini holds. Nadal leads by four games to two. Doll wearing a half million dollar watch, and I was checking out Fanini's, and it looks equally impressive. <laughs> Would you expect it anything else? No, I, from a stylish Italian. I mean, look at the way he's put together, man. That guy just rolls strong. Best serve so far, 125. You know, when he first sets out, you don't think Nadal is going to get to that ball, but he does. It's like a closing speed you see from defensive backs in the NFL, American football, where these guys are able to just change direction and then all of a sudden close in on the, an offensive player and make an interception. This guy is just so quick, powerful. Ah! Yeah. 30, 15. Great serve, great result for Nadal. Got a chance to put a real stranglehold on this first set. Sweat is just dripping off his nose and face. Boy, when Fanini wants to, he can accelerate the ball. But he's got to be in position. You notice the shot right there, he was able to set up because the serve was only 93 miles an hour. 
we're only 33 minutes into it, and, and honestly, Rafael Nadal is just dripping wet, pouring just from his headband all the way down to the court. <laughs> That serves been money this tournament. Been very effective with that cutter wide. Again, Nadal. Oh, Nadal pulls it off. Holding to go up 5 2 in the first set at the U.S. Open. Nadal leads by five games to two. Now, sometimes these temperamental clay court guys, they check out of sets when they think they're a lost cause. Is, yeah. that, is, is that his way? Well, it all depends on, with, with him, how he's, to be honest, serving. Because if he can get out of some quick, quick points like this, he's going to hang around. But if, if the serve starts to go, then the rest of his game starts to unravel. He needs time to develop a point. His serve gets him out of some jams. Notice right there, he got a good solid serve, only 99 miles an hour, but that set up the second shot. Now, if he's missing that, now his opponent's teeing off on a second serve. See, another big first serve. This match is going to go with his fastball. 118 miles an hour, so it's not a flamethrower, but it gets the job done. He's got a quick motion, a low toss, fires away. There's another one. He just doesn't finish the job with the forehand down the line. Remember now, he's only down one break. He wins here. He can put a little bit of pressure on the Dow. Try to close this out. Now watch the difference between a first and second serve, second shot. Now he's running. See the difference? So instead of set up for a second shot when he makes his first serve, second serve was 95 miles an hour, but he's scrambling and running for the backhand. Gonna challenge that. It's got. You know, to me, you can have <clears throat> all the power or style or whatever. To me, if you have a bad second serve, ooh, you got a problem. Because not only is it, is it physical, but the moment you miss your first serve, it's mental. There is a saying in tennis you're only as good as your second serve. Okay, watch this. He almost Jeez. falls down. And this is Fanini, down set point. Like I was just sliding around. They're not going to show the replay. But he honestly almost tripped up after hitting that second shot and recovered. Advantage Fanini. I think he likes saying Fanini's name. <laughs> So Fonini trying to postpone the closure of the set. No drama, no hijinks yet between these two. 
Oh, it's still early. And the favorite's kind of winning right now, and Fanini's playing okay. He's staying relevant. It's going to be a big game. He's got to lock in here. Get some returns back in play. a stat, but gut feeling the 15. long rallies have all gone to Nadal. Perfectly set up. 30 love. Now, even if you get to this serve, you're done. Not even in the picture. Ah! Now, a bunch of set points. One a doll. <laughs> Called out. That's it. Nadal takes the set. We'll the wait for the challenge here. Ball was called if he... out. He doesn't look too confident. But the set's over anyway, so why not try it? It's out. Four stands. Game That'll do it. Nadal takes set, set number Nadal. one in this third round match and is into it. 6-3 over Fabio Fanini. So a nice dry Seven shirt sets. that won't be that way for long. Love. He doesn't have a single winner off his backhand yet. The thing is, sometimes you have to wait for the opportunity and... Point. Thirty love. This is just the way the crowd plays tennis in their dreams. Love. Nice start for Fanini here in the first second set after dropping the first. Game That's a quick one. First game, second set. You know, watch the placement of the water. Like so.
That was really hit deep, and he couldn't do much with it. 15 long. He is just yanking Fanini all over the place. Fertile love. Fanini's got to honestly start moving a little bit quicker to the backhand side. It's the backhand that just keeps letting him down. It's interesting that Nadal would go there considering he's been getting so many cheap points off the backhand side of Fanini. Fanini already 11 unforced errors to three from Nadal. Game Nadal. One game on. I'm surprised someone famous is not sitting behind Uncle Tony because <laughs> somebody who's always looking for a little exposure grabs that seat. I thought T Tiger Woods is not in that box. I think he is. He's just not right behind Uncle Tony. Well, because he doesn't want the attention, oh. probably. <laughs> well played, Al. Well played. Yeah. More forehand magic from Fanini. See, right there, he looks like a top 10 player. Yeah, so Uncle Tony's to the left. And then his brother, Rafa's dad, is right above him. Carlos Costa, Uncle Tony's left, our right, in the blue shirt. What? Former top 10 player in the world from Spain. Played in the 90s, and that's mom and dad. It's the second time that Fonini's gone to that, and it's gorgeous. Very artistic. So far in the second set, Nadal has not been able to do much with the Fonini serve. Game Fonini. And we'll take a break on serve in the second set with Nadal up one set, six games to three. Rafa Nadal serving 6-3 first set in his pocket. We're on serve right here. Just missed what would have been a great shot. Okay, so watch Nadal here very carefully. Ball in the pocket. Five, six, seven. And a couple more. No, he didn't do the hair thing. Love. 
How's your Italian? <laughs> Not good, but. <laughs> Fifteen. There he goes. Was that good? Thirty-one. Wow. It's impossible almost to get a passing shot on these guys. Yeah, yeah. They they really have an exceptional explosive speed. The forehand looked pretty good in that little sequence. He's better. I don't know if you notice this. He's better right now, at least in his career, in that side of the court. So he's in that backhand corner, and then he can go inside out like he did there or inside in. He seems to have more control or command there compared to when it's actually out to the left-hand side of him to his forehand side and trying to go down the line or cross court. Nadal takes the game. We're still on serve. It's two all. Two games all. Go to usopen.org for everything about the U.S. Open. Scores, highlights, stats, recaps, schedules. Uh, Luke Jensen's next appearance. <laughs> no. And the U.S. Open store at usopen.org. Al, you and I, we live a low-key life. <laughs> Fifteen long. Fanini does not. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I wouldn't mind being either one of these guys for a weekend. That would be a wild ride. Yeah, it would be good. Uh, depth on that return. Fifteen all. Thirty fifteen. One twenty one. That's his best speed so far. Another one of those long rallies that goes to Nadal. Fertion.
Next for Sims. That's a big serve because he gets down break point. This match starts to lose, really start to get away from Fanini. If he gets down a break here midway through the third, I mean midway through the second set. Oh, I thought that maybe was headed out. It was close. By three games to two. No, we're still on serve. Five games into the second set. Rafa Nadal back to the baseline. Please. On serve, second set. And that that voice, that shout, that growl. Is that the beginning of it? Well, it's he knows he's got to make a move right now. He's up 3-2 in the second set. And he knows he cannot let Nadal get deeper and deeper into this set. Nadal just doesn't lose leads in best of five set matches. If he gets up two sets to love, I mean, mercy rule. <laughs> I mean, really. I, I want to say it, it, the record is just amazing. When he's up two sets to love. And, it just, and so you know this as a competitor going into the, the fight with Nadal that you've got to come out early, first or second set, or you're booking your flight home. Forty fifteen. Bonini not so sure. Checks the mark and slowly retreats. Strong game for Nadal. This roof and the lighting, and it's just changed this place so much. The way it looks. It looks like a digital photo, doesn't it? I mean, yes. that, that high def just bringing it alive. That was just a poor shot selection. He knows it. He got caught between a drop volley and a stick volley, and he put it up. Love 15. Look at this. And just serves Nadal like a nice appetizer just to come up and stay in the point. I think he had time to let it bounce and run around it. Yeah. I don't know how you feel, Al, but the only thing I would like to see is I like the camera angle that's where the president's box is, that one where you can get kind of on the shoulder right there. Mm -hmm. I just feel you, as a viewer, you feel like you're in that front section, that lower bowl. 
you really get the speed. Much better when you remember Roddick used to play and that ball used to jump off his racket. 140, 50 miles an hour. And it would thunder to the backstop, his, his bullet-like serves. That was out. And shots like that are why he's losing. That was unforced error number 17 compared to six for Nadal. And maybe it's because he thinks he's got to play to that level of oh, shot. Oh, yeah, yeah. But it's weird, though, because he's won two matches against him on Nadal's surface. So he has to have the confidence to handle anything Nadal throws at him. Critical serve right to the backhand. Placement very good. Now that's the forehand out to the left that we were looking for, the running forehand. Look at the amount of racket head speed put in that. Whoa. a long rally that didn't go Nadal's way. Deuce. Deuce. Chair umpire is constantly repeating what I said. <laughs> I know. He's really into it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. he's really pounding out that Fanini. It's good. Critical game for Fanini, and he gets it. So we're still on serve. The doll up a set. Oh, wait a minute, we have a check, and that's good. <laughs> Still waiting for that first crack in this second set. As Luke likes to say, we're just about feeling some scoreboard pressure. What a shot. 
Nadal had two chances, two break point chances, and just could not convert. It could have really changed the match. It's almost un unwinnable that point when it starts the way it did. And these are the type of service games Nadal's going to need in this match and moving forward. Just quick, easy, get to 40 love, close them out, work the return side. Yikes. So Nadal's going to go and get a Freshly strung rack, it's going to be a little okay, tighter, a little bit more control, easier to return. We're broadcasting to you from that silver structure up there in the upper right. It's all silver. <laughs> no, it's the I'm sorry. <laughs> I like how you're pointing to it. It's just, I wanted just, to show you where we were. <laughs> well, we got, what, 158 countries? Oh, yeah, there we are. They got it. <laughs> It's still week one, Al. We gotta we gotta pace ourselves here. Yeah. Fifteen long. But I love that tactic. Coming in behind a nice solid shot, using the volley, a high percentage shot close to the net. Boy, would Nadal love a break here. Nadal started throwing change-ups all of a yeah. sudden. Using that slice backhand. Chopping at that ball right there at the squash shot. A little too close. Forty love. Forty fifteen. This now becomes a very important point. It keeps Nadal interested in this game a little bit longer. Keeps him relevant. That backhand cross court has been ugly for Fanini tonight. That's a beautiful shot. Have you seen 4K television yet? No. Oh, wait. Really? That's where we're going. It's it's HD on steroids. No, th no glasses? No, 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 no. 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 Oh, and 
another error. Oh, look at the racket. Oh, one of the best bounces you'll see in tennis. He gets some serious air. Oh, they got to show this again. Okay, so this is the technique. You want to go right to the top. Gets a little bit more hanged up, but it comes down and gives you the double whammy. It's angry skill right there. It's hit. And it just comes right back to his hand. And as they said with Coco Vandeweghe, that's their Grand Slam. Super big break. And now Nadal can serve for the set. Rafael Nadal trying to take advantage of a big double fault and back-to-back -back unforced errors that gave him the service break. Could be stranglehold time. First serve has been great, 75%. And he wins 80% of the ones he gets in. And you have to figure Fonini after the racket slamming. His head's not in a great oh, place no, no, right no. now. Yeah. And if he's going to make a move, this has got to be it. Some type of emotional commitment to fighting here in this game. Putting the ball in play and looking for his forehand. Well, that's the way things are going for him right now. He's not feeling like he's on the beach back at home in Arma de Tazia. Triple set point to go up to zero. He was up 40 love in that game. At least two more shots at it. Now, here's the difference. Remember at 4-all, Fanini had 40-15 and double faulted and just kept Rafa around. And then Rafa breaks him. Let's see what Rafa does here. Two-time U.S. Open champion. No, Fanini's a mess right now. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It wasn't a double fault. He could be helped out of his yeah. mess. Uh huh. Who badly hit balls by Nadal? Unbelievable. This. Now, if you're Nadal, where do you go with this serve? Fanini is sitting on the serve to his backhand, so he's sitting on his backhand expecting that slice. So Nadal can either go flat wide on this first, but does he trust it? It's open. He keeps going that same spot. Fanini is just leaning on it, already running towards that spot to cover it.
It's out. What stuff? Nadal's got it. Mr. Funini is uh, challenging the call on the left near sideline. Ball was called out. What? Well, I'm sorry. What did the umpire say? I, I did. What was that, that middle part? That is just. Uh, that is unbelievable. And Fanini's just burning a, just. Just uh, for why not? Well, I mean, the set is over. What's yeah. the difference? Oh, it's, uh, no, set point now. Oh, right, right, right. Well, it's still maybe one point. But where does he go? Does he go body? T's open. He hasn't been using it. Game at second set, Nadal. And another error ends the set. Nadal's got to feel like this is where he wants to be. Up two, he's almost a sure thing. 6-3, six, 6-4. Six, so on we go to the third set. A dramatic closeout. A great point between Rafael Nadal and Fabio Fonini. Look at Fanini, he's got 21 winners and he's down two sets to none. But it's the 22 unforced errors that almost negate that. Whoa, man. Fifteen love. That wrist action, how he hit that. That's a lot of woe right there. Why is he still why is Nadal still going there? Do you know what I mean? What I'll give it to Nadal. He has not allowed Fanini really any bite into this match. I don't know why he's going over there. I mean. Fanidi has had sparks of brilliance like that running forehand. I'd love to have subtitles, just what he's saying. He had something to say about that. First game. Comfortably First taking game one. Everybody knows Clint Eastwood, and he became famous in what were called spaghetti westerns because they were directed by an Italian man by the name of Sergio Leone. If the ears were different, Fabio Fanini would be such a great oh. bad guy in those movies. Unbelievable. You know, badges? We don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> There's someone probably in Korea or <laughs> somewhere in the Middle East like, badges? He said, <laughs> did he say badges? You know, the movies were the good, the bad, and the ugly. Oh. And... High Plains Drifter? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Hang him high. And the music that went along with it? Oh. Oh, the tight hey. shots of the eyes. Oh. And, yeah. oh, he, could, he could have been a big hit in those movies. Yeah. All right, let's see what Nadal's got here in the third. Just out. I don't think Nadal was thinking tweener either. A lot of people left when Nadal took that second set. Third 
Chilo. Both sets were the same. Pretty tight, and then Nadal finds a way late. Fifteen. Something about that surprised Fanini. Forty fifteen. Game Nadal. Pretty easy for Rafael Nadal. One game off. Third round match for the right to go to the fourth round here at the U.S. Open. Can't wait to hear what this place sounds like when they put the roof on. Love Unforced error number 24. But it's weird, though, because they're weird misses, especially at the backhand side. The forehand's got to be clicking, and it is. But he's not engaged enough, and his backhand won't keep him in the in these rallies long enough to get to his forehand. He's serving 64% first serves in for the match, 67 now higher for the 71% after that last first serve. So he's setting up his offense, but the backhand's just killing him. Man, it's hard being a lines person, huh? <laughs> you got to stand there all night. You can't move. And, and the entire match, people are shooting stuff at you. Here's the thing. They don't need to be there. There's a technology now that will call the lines. I mean, you need someone to, I mean. You can, listen, in every park, and every tennis court, people call their own lines. I like them. They're nice people. <laughs> I'm not saying they're not nice people. Leave them alone. 13, 14. Here's a chance for a huge early break. But then again, in the first set, we had, what, three straight service breaks, right? He's got it. And again, it's into the net for Fonini. And Nadal now has a chance to get a 3-1 lead. Well, we'll find out if that was a huge service break or not. Rafael Nadal tries to consolidate. Al Troutwig along with Luke Jensen. And we are at the U.S. Open in New York City. Now, New York has five boroughs. There's Staten Island. There's Brooklyn to our west. There's Manhattan and the Bronx. And Brooklyn. And we're in Queens. Right.
Well, you, you get the feeling the karma has shifted. Oh, I, absolutely. I mean, I really thought this was going to be so much more competitive, even entertaining at, at points. It's had its moments, but Moments, sparks, you know, glimpses, but nothing what well, we've seen from the spring when those guys were really kind of battling on the on the dirt and see now the forehand's going off. It's really strange because Fanini's not a rookie. I mean, he's been out on the tour for a while. He's he's well respected. You know, with his talent, he's must-see TV in the locker room where guys, you know, want to watch him play because he's so animated and unpredictable. He's interesting. But none of that has really come out. And obviously some of it is because Nadal hasn't allowed it. Just kind of every opportunity, just slam the door in the first, slam the door in the second. And at love, Nadal consolidates to go up 3-1 in what could be the final set here tonight. Nadal leads by three games to one. Go to usopen.org for everything you need to know, see, or buy at the U.S. Open. Uncle Tony has to like the way his, oh, yeah. his, his pupil looks at this U.S. Open. I have never done that, spoken out loud to myself for 30 <laughs> seconds. I just, I, have, I don't recall. There are people that you'll see, you know, that do that, and they're a little different. Tennis players seem to do it all the time. Out. Which one was out? Hey, buddy. Hey, <laughs> my friend. I want to see Zuzai's out. I'm good. The point is over there. This one, this one is flat on the line. No, it, this one is there. The point is over. No, no, I stop. Even if it was in or out, my ball, I stop. I couldn't I, see that. I was back to the ball, but with that one. But this one. I no, asked him that one. That's why I tell you to say something. If you say something, I can, I can do something. But yeah, no, but I do my ball in and if it was in or out, I stop. But I could not see that was flat. Yeah, but it's your problem if you could not see or not. I asked one that, I stopped. Right and one I looking good. Yeah, but anyways, I was cool, couldn't do running on the other side of the ball. Agree. But if you say challenge, it seems you have to Yeah, but I stop. I feel like I just watched a scene from the Pink Panther. <laughs> And I still don't know what happened there. So Fanini's saying that he stopped after he hit this backhand because he's questioning the ball that he hit. So Nadal got the point. Nadal got the point. Okay. So if you think that was weird, and you run into things that are different all the time in this game, all these different nationalities and languages, today I'm in a match. The umpire says in this one person's native language, that it talks whatever. 40, 50. The other guy on a changeover who doesn't speak that language says, starts talking to the umpire in his language. Mm -hmm. The umpire says, I'm sorry, what language are you speaking? I, I don't speak that. He's going, exactly. Showing disrespect. So he started getting on the umpire because the umpire was speaking a language that he understood with the other player. Game of so the umpire says, well, it didn't have anything to do with you. And he said, I'm playing the match. <laughs> it has everything to do with me. <laughs> Well, Fanini with a very convincing game to make it 3-2 as we continue on into the night here at Flushing Meadows. Fanini's done everything on the winning side. It's the error side that's hurt him. 
And Nadal has forced him into 42 more errors. play speaks for itself. He's still into this. Well, we're about to find out if this is going to become a match again. Real soon. And this is going to be a big point for Fanini to really connect on a return to start out the point in a positive way. It was just exactly what he wanted. Maybe a little short. But the backhand connected not just once, but twice. I love to get a heart rate monitor on Uncle Tony right now. Just get that heart. Because this match could go either way right now. I mean, we could be out of here in 20 minutes. Or Fanini could make a run with all that talent. Four times in his career, he's come back from two down. Good. I mean, these guys get to everything. Ball change, please. New balls. Three games all. I mean, he's on a roll right now. Now this time, the Nadal backhand flags an opportunity for Fanini to pull ahead here in this third set.
Panini looking really good right now. That's what started happening at the end of the second set. Fanini holds to take a 4-3 lead here in the third. By four games this race. Nadal takes the first set from Fabio Fonini, 6-3. Nadal takes the second set from Fonini, who made some mistakes late, 6-4. And now here's Rafael Nadal trying to make it 4-all. Such a nice forehand. Again, where he hits it from, his backhand corner, inside out. Now, you're kind of dangerous because you don't play it with a lot of velocity and placement. Really good placement. Fanini's walking right into his best shot, just forehand down the line. And we've seen a couple of lasers when he's in that forehand corner down the line. One of the things you'll notice technically with Fanini is that when he's hitting that forehand, his body is completely still. He's almost upright, doesn't use a lot of lower body, he doesn't bend his knees that much, but he's in perfect control, balanced when he hits that ball. Guess how many winners without looking? Guess how many winners Nadal has in this set? Total. 30, winners, I'm going four. Three. Wow. He is not hitting winners in this set. I, again, I, when you said that, I'm guessing low anyway. And Fanini said nine. Yeah. Forty, fifteen. Fourteen, thirteen. <laughs> So now it's four all. Gorgeous shot across the grounds here at the Billie Jean King National Tennis Center. That's sort of what this Finnish stadium will look like next year with the panel over the middle. And that's open air there. So it still feels like an open air event. So a lot of people have asked, will there be during these hot days air conditioning like the other, you know, Wimbledon and 
Australia. It, it just is not going to happen. Not that I know. Yeah, but it will be interesting as things evolve when the roof does become complete for next year and you add 23,000 people in this. You can do all the testing you want when it's empty. Not going to be the same. You got to add that whole element hey, of human beings. I like noise. Yeah, that's. <laughs> but just think of the body heat and all all the stuff that goes into that. I don't think it's going to be closed that often. Okay, well let's just say. I mean, it wouldn't have been closed this week at all yet. Yeah. See, I don't know how with these. The open system there, how they'd put an air conditioning system, unless they're okay with just burning it, you know, it'd be going right out those, the space between the roof and the permanent stadium. But to me, in these heat rule situations, you know, when it's so hot for the fans and so hot for the players, what they do in Australia, they just cover it, cool it down, and now you're playing it. When the rest of the field that is outside, they're not playing because of the heat rule. Right. The Bells had a few like that tonight. I guess every player does, but it's 40-15. That's really going to put the squeeze on him to... Hold his serve. Yeah, <clears throat> okay. When he does his job, it's five four in the third. And you see what's missing in the Dolls game in this third set. Shots that win points as we slide into the third hour here, quarter to midnight on the eastern seaboard of the United States. This will determine how far we go into the night further. Fifteen now. That is awesome. From that part of the court, he does he doesn't have a lot of real estate. So he's got to measure just right, and he comes up with this beautiful forehand, short hops it. Well, this is a pretty big point. Total control.
30-14. Thank you. Set point. One of the things when you're racing out to that forehand side is that you have got to make sure you make that shot under these situations. The match is right at its very end, the finish line. And Fanini's fighting for his U.S. Open life. And these are the type of points we thought we we're going to have. And finally, with Fanini's backhand finding its range, finding the target, it changes everything because that's when he opens up the court. Look, I'm not sure I understand the way Nadal is playing right now. He's hitting everything that Fanini can handle. It's almost as if he's waiting for his mistakes, and they're not coming as frequently as they were. It's that one thing in tennis. You, you start playing not to lose instead of playing to win. He's got a two sets to lovely. Okay, he's just down. Five, four. He's got to sit there and bring a good game. He's watching the scoreboard too much instead of really putting the hammer down on this guy like he did in the first two sets. Again, the third set, and we'll go to the fourth. Six games for four. We're in a fourth set, everybody, here at the National Tennis Center. Fourth set. Players are ready, please. Thank you. Bonini, the number 32 seed, serving now first in the fourth. But down two sets to one. since he had a shot like that. Fifteen fourteen. Connected well on that, but just sailed long. You want to try to drive that deep in the court. It set you up, but just missed. Uh, 
and Eating is playing some tennis. This. Nadal does not want to mess with this guy. Late into the night. Fanini has nothing to lose. He was down two sets to love. Nadal runs around to a huge forehand. Deuce. But again, from that side, that's where his forehand seems to be most effective right now. But that wasn't always the case. Supreme Nadal was good both in that corner and then out to his left. But out to the left has just been off the mark. Like that one. Look at that. That's a routine shot. But, you know, he, I mean, that ball's right. It's like a warm up shot, and he miss hits it to inside the service line. If I said, I don't think he can win the U.S. Open playing like this. Oh, no doubt. I mean, after watching Feder and Djokovic. I mean, he hasn't, we haven't even talked about Vavrinka. We haven't even talked about Murray. I think he's clearly behind those guys. It's called out. Oh, it was called good. I thought it was clearly out. What did he say? I, did he say good or out? I thought he said, called it out. I the thought umpire. they called it out, but the chair umpire said it was good. And it is good. First hands replay the point. Advantage Nadal. I think Nadal's hitting the ball as hard as he used to. I don't think so. I, I, it, I mean, it's just obvious. Look at the other side. is isn't pressed at all. Challenging the ball on the right service line. Ball was called out. 
The microphone was designed by the same guy who designed the grapefruit. <laughs> and that was out. It's not even close. I'm telling you, it's a different match right now when Fanini's backhand stepping up, joining the party here. And Nadal still can hit a running forehand on a consistent basis to his left. Nadal's had one backhand winner the entire match. And that's the kind of thing that has been keeping Nadal going. The mistakes. Coming up on nine minutes for this one game. As this match takes us into tomorrow. It just seems to me Nadal no longer possesses the next gear that he once had, that you see from, you know, this tournament, from Roger, from Joker. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's I that, totally that pull-away speed, that pull-away talent. But he didn't do anything. Panini just, you know, gifted him. Yeah, I mean, I was shocked the way the third set played out. And Tiger's got to be looking at his watch like, wait a second, man. <laughs> it's, I've got my, my kid here. It's midnight. <laughs> I don't want to disrespect the guy. Exactly. Now you're kind of roped into it. That's the downside <laughs> of being Tiger. You're committed. You can't leave because the whole stadium and the the rest of the world will know. Or well, you just pieced out on Rafael Nadal when he's in a struggle. And can you imagine if Rafa then goes and loses, and Tiger leaves? And oh, jeez. <laughs> I could put together a highlight reel in this match that made Fanini look like world champion. <laughs> no. <laughs> put some music behind oh. it. Pavarotti. Greatest player of all time. <laughs> same time I could do another highlight reel that made you wonder how he ever won a match. <laughs> <laughs> it's good editing. Out. Now explain to me and he's been doing it consistently all night. 
Why is Nadal constantly ground stroking right at him? I, I don't. I just okay. Here's my theory, and, and we do this as players. If you if you're missing, you have to bring in your target. So normally you want to aim for the lines. You're honestly aiming for the sideline, the baseline. Very precise targets, but obviously, especially off the forehand side, the doll is just all over the place. So what he does is brings in his targets to where he can make those shots. The problem is, it looks like he's just going down the middle with everything. It's a bonehead shot. And again, Nadal is not winning this match. He's being given the match. Yeah. I mean, he can't help, you know, Fanini's execution or not, but it's really a Wozniacki kind of match. Yeah. No offense, just put the ball in play, fight, scrap. This is my angle. Like, if, if I'm, you know, Grand Poobah of everything, that's my angle, that last point of the to, camera. To watch tennis. To watch. I mean, you see that ball flying at you. Now, this one's too low. It's the one right above. I don't want to tie his shoelaces, of course. I think this one's a little too high. That's just me. Fanini has to hold here. Oh, no, no. <laughs> that, that lob wound up on the radar at LaGuardia Airport. He had so much time to get set for it. <laughs> it's like fan of the opera with this guy. This is honestly as routine as you can get. The, look at that. How does he not see the down the line? Not only does he miss it, he's hitting it right at Nadal. Oh, th this match is over if Nadal, I mean, finished. Fanini will just go south. But then he comes up with great, great stuff. With the forehand, that's his combination. Two and a half games in to the set. He's got 10 unforced errors. So Nadal up a break. Fifteen. Yeah, that's what it's like.
15 on. Two inches higher, and that's a winner. Three straight serve misses by Nadal. Fifteen thirty. Can't do anything but Uena. And Nadal hits it right into his backhand. You see how still he is when he hits that ball? And the doll is not getting it out of his strike zone. Not making a move. It's honestly batting practice. Look at this. Just look at Fanini's upper body. Look how still he is. And it's just rotation with his arms and core. Such great talent. Break point. Too many times in this game that Nadal's been on the defensive. Again, Fanini never had to move. He's, Nadal's brought his target in so much that now Fanini is completely in command. Two games off. Look at this technique. So nice seeing the cross court angle. Go to usopen.org for stats, highlights, schedules, US Open store as well. 15 long. This just feels like the Wozniacki match, doesn't it? Yep. It really does. Letting the opponent just hang around. Give him a chance to try. Give him a chance to believe. And then it just gets out of control and you can't stop it. Who's going to win this match? Nadal's going to win this match. I, I'll be shocked if he does it. Now, whether it goes five. I just can't believe Fanini can hold it together. Long enough under such circumstances. Best of five sets. U.S. Open. Nadal. Their history. At some point, the experience, the mental toughness, the drive of Nadal has got to take over. 
but if you can't play, I mean, that's a total miss hit on the backhand side. 40, 15. And the forehand wakes up. About that time. Ball change, please. New balls. Polini leads by three games to two. Some of the numbers that have been established tonight. New balls here in the fourth set. Love 15. That's, again, forehand coming alive out to his left. Now's left. 15 on. That's a great serve. Fognini is challenging the call on the right center line. Ball well, I definitely think that was good. Oh, yes. Thirty fifteen. Something happened. 40, Something happened to Fanini. Fanini has one challenge remaining. Tweaked his ankle. <laughs> Game Nadal. Watch Fanini. After this, I didn't see anything. Something got undone. So three all in the fourth. the better Nadal games lately. Safety long.
30 log. Good. Wow. That goes on the good highlight reel. Whatever was bothering him doesn't seem to be an issue. <laughs> Forty fifteen. Forty thirteen. Game for any. Fanini holds. Fanini leads by four games to three. Exactly. Well, Nadal obviously has to hold here. Thank you. Telling you, man, we haven't locked horns with a five setter yet in 2015, but it's feeling that way. It certainly does. Panini's been much more aggressive. Right to him. Who is this guy? Yeah. Fanini is just taking control of every point now. At this point, Nadal has just got to get down to basics. Let's just win this point. Let's put some real thought behind this serve and this point. There's your combination. 
But he hasn't been getting to serve that wide at all. Enough. Fifteen forty. Tell the story, Al. This is unbelievable. What story? Look at this guy. He's totally committed right now. He's bringing the water back. He needs his own little mini bar back there with the towel. He's got the water. This guy's a beauty. <laughs> and now the Dow puts more chips in. Okay. Let's do this. Love 15. Fifteen on. Look, I am absolutely mystified at how Nadal is playing this match. <laughs> I know. Thirty fifteen. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Forty thirty. First service. Again, and full set. Fulini, 6 3. Two sets all. So we go to the fifth set. And the fans seem pretty happy about it. But Rafael Nadal. Feels like he is on the ropes. Nadal has allowed his opponent to feel confident. 
take control of the match, take control of the points. Kundal's serve has not really done the job with the combination. No forehand play. How about the strategy? Nadal has got to go to this guy's backhand, more to the sideline, produce more shots with his forehand down the line, keeping Fanini honest. Thank you. Fifteen love. If you're Nadal, you want to take more chances. Because you're serving first, you're serving downhill. So if you hold here, then Fanini has to serve uphill. It's the best scenario for Rafael Nadal right now. When you say serving uphill, you mean to take a lead? Yeah. Okay. It's so difficult to constantly come from behind in Fanini's spot because he can't slip. Well, oh, that's Fanini from the first two sets. Throwing points away. Taking wild swings. How much do you think Fanini would give to get the last few games of the second set back? Oh, absolutely. And if I'm Nadal, I pour a lot of energy into this game right now. Let's just see if this guy can hang with me. Thank you. If I make a charge. That's, the return is way too short. 15 low. And it's right at him. Yeah. One of the things he could do is slice the ball to keep the ball low take some pace off of it to get himself time to get back into the. Some quality swings from Fanini. And he doesn't look pushed at all. I mean, he looks like he's in the second set. Maybe. I mean, when was the last time you saw Fanini hit a backhand? But every shot of his has winner inspiration. Nadal's shot naturally hits a lot of topspin, so it's not going to get through the court as much, especially off the forehand side. But that's the mystery of his ground game right now. The forehand can't be counted on. Look at that. It's by seven feet. Now the pressure One game back off. on the server, on the Dow.
fifty love. Oh, he's fighting. He had to fend off a very good return. Ripped it to the open court. Look how close that came to be. Unbelievable. A great look at his forehand. Oh, ho, ho, ho. But again, Fanini's controlling the middle of the court. And Nadal keeps hitting to the middle of the court. He's got to go to a slice. If you have no confidence in your top spin backhand, slice it cross court. At least it stays low, but get it out of the middle and keep it low so it doesn't hang. Panini's just a, playing better tennis right now. I mean, he has shifted into a gear that Nadal is having trouble with. If he didn't have all the unforced errors in the first two sets, I'm not sure we're still here. And I think that's confidence. I don't think he really believed when he walked out. He was going to win, in my opinion. Now, now he clearly feels he's got this guy in the ropes. It's, it's just a better ball. It's bigger. A lot of depth on it. Length on the shots. Takes that heavy top before it gets around his shoulders and then drives it cross court. That backhand wasn't around in the first couple sets. Remember, it was like miss, miss, miss. And now he's timing it. This is the moment. Nadal is challenging the ball on the left service line. Ball was called out. Four stands. Yep. Now, can he handle prosperity? Can he handle this lead? By two games to one. Service break off Nadal. Let's see how Fanini handles it. That's a great forehand. And now the crowd is going to get behind the legend. Love 15. The king of the red clay. 
two-time champion here, Rafael Nadal, is going to need the support from this New York crowd. And now Fanini starts playing the ball down the middle. Or just moments ago, he was going sideline to sideline. Is he starting to think in a passive manner? Is he starting to think that Nadal is just ready to give him the match? Fifteen fourteen. So much for the prosperity question. That was a beautiful run. Best came from Nadal in a while. What is going on? Was it in the first set or early in the second? There was like two or three, four breaks in a row? Yeah. Yeah. First set. I mean, it's been three hours and 15 minutes, and you had a three-setter with Serena. 
How are you feeling? Thrilled. Oh, that was a tricky shot. He's not in position to hit a full overhead and really smack it, so he had him stuck with kind of a high volley. Well, you would have thought that Nadal with the fist pump and the crowd and the service break would be able to feed off of that. But he starts out love 40 and can't come back. So it's 3-2 Fanini back in front. Fabio Fanini has a chance to give himself a 4-2 lead in the fifth and final set here at the U.S. Open on a Friday night that's become Saturday morning. You still think Nadal's going to win this? I do. I do. I, I, I think. The pressure of the moment is going to get to this guy. I mean, he's 32 in the world with top 10 talent. Now, why is that? Because something between the ears just isn't right. And the Dow is going to see if this guy's got the guts and the nerve and the poise to pull it off. I'm telling you. Rolling in the sixth game. Does Fanini see or sense the finish line, or is he locked into the moment? So you can't watch the scoreboard. You got to stay with what got you there. Good, solid, aggressive play. Instead, he's going a little bit outside his comfort zone, making errors.
Thank you. He's got all the support you would want. Thank you. Not, that was just a great shot. A beautiful pickup. But he is stepping into that no man's land area and short hopping. Somebody didn't make the catch. No 15. Way long. Fifteen thirty. Only the fifth ace for Nadal tonight. This point feels pretty huge. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's such you. a a swing Thank you. swing point because it's really going to set the tone for the remainder of this set. How about that angle for the service break? Nadal makes his usual run to the baseline and the towel handoff, but it has been service break after service break after service break here in the fifth and final set. So just when you think somebody's got something going, they don't. Fanini to serve, 4-3. Thank you very much. Thank you. Players are ready now. Thanks a lot. Oh, 
Well, Fanini's got some supporters in the building, too. Well, you just got to respect how much he's come back from two sets to love down, how much really explosive tennis he's played. Oh, wow. <laughs> he's winning the match. He is winning this match. It's not like Nadal is giving him anything. Almost from off the court. Bellissima. He's doing it all here. Faulty love. Oh, it doesn't kill him. 40 love. 40 15. 50 unforced errors for the match for Fanini. 17 for Nadal. But here's the big stat 61 winners for Fanini, 29 winners. No offense for Nadal. Here we go. Forty, thirty. What a response. Almost. This. Thank you. Thank you.
There you go. He hit that cut shot. A little junk ball. Benini was up 40 love in this game. Fumbles it. And now advantage the dog. Remember you said that double fault doesn't hurt him? That's true. That's yeah. It sent him in the wrong direction. Good. Remember, he missed one of those overheads earlier in the match. This time he likes to take it out of the air, play it safe right down the middle. Another chance. The whole lower bowl is pretty much full, and these people are thrilled that they stayed. One of the great players in the sport in some serious difficulty. Pulls the trigger. He's going to challenge. He's going to lose that challenge. He's got three. Now, if we go to a tiebreaker, this is the only Grand Slam that plays a tiebreaker to settle the score in the final set. All the others play it out. If we get to a tiebreaker, each player will get an additional challenge. giant tug of war right now for, for this game, for the momentum. That's the great thing about this game. In other sports, you can run the clock out. You can't do it here. You've got to knock the guy out. You've got to put him away. The Dow lives for the battle, the fight, the competition. He is digging in. I think what's on the line here. I mean, if Fanini loses, no big deal. Lost to Rafa Nadal. Nadal loses. Oh, just makes it over. We are three hours and 36 minutes into this contest, and look at the touch played. No death grip. Loosen up the fingertips. Use the touch. With the fans. <laughs> This is great. That goes on as good highlight reel. I love those long rallies, wondering who's going to crack. And that's pressure asking you, are you good enough? Are you strong enough? Do you have what it takes to conquer me today? Yeah. 
And in his third chance, off another unforced error, Nadal gets the break. It's 4 all. Was that nerves? Absolutely. That thing landed almost in the bottom of the net. The other thing you got to start to take into consideration, where are we with our bodies? Where are we with our energy level, our fuel? How much do we have left? Uncle Tony just pointing. Be smart. Play with your head. Well, that is one of the really, really random things about the sport. When the ball hits the tape, where does it go? Another one. Even with all the errors, he still has the nerve to go for these shots. Love 13. Thank you. Oh, another one. 68 winners in the match. 18 for the set. Love 14. Just when you think this guy's out of it, he rips magic through the court, down the line. Winner. Triple break point for the chance to serve for the match. Thank you. How is this guy 32 in the world? I mean, think about that. Oh, my goodness. What a closeout in that game by Fonini. And he'll have one of the biggest service opportunities of his career in 90 seconds or more. Well, by my count, it's seven straight service games. Yesterday you were telling me about a match that had nine, but it's amazing to watch how this has unfolded. Players are ready, thank you. He's three away. Where would you rank this upset? Oh, unbelievable. 15 love. Alan Nadal's career, he's 151 and 0. In his Grand Slam career, his life, 151 and 0, when, went up. Two sets to love. That could include Davis Cup. Well, big matches. Anything best of five sets. Well, throwing an unforced error. Now it's 30 love. Ooh, that was a little casual. 
57 unforced errors. Two really hard points to get. He had the whole court and he missed it. Oh, it was good. No. 30 all. He's got two challenges left. Nadal has two challenges left. Please. It's Nadal who cracks. And now he is one point away from knocking out what has become a rival and who is a two-time U.S. Open champion. You questioned whether he has it in him. Big serve. Slow down. And he has it in him. It is Nadal who launches it wide. 